and welcome to Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand's globally ranked capital city university. My name is Professor Grant Guilford, I'm the Vice Chancellor of the University, and it's my great pleasure to host you for the Capital City University panel discussion this evening. I'd like to extend a special welcome to the members of the diplomatic community in Parliament and the public service that are here tonight. It's wonderful to have you here. Today's panel is made up of some of the world's leading experts on migration and populist politics from Victoria and from capital city universities in Europe, Asia, America and Australia. I'd like to welcome Professor Tim Bale from Queen Mary University in London, uh, Professor Virginie uh, Guirodon from Sciences Po in Paris, Emeritus Professor Supang uh, Shantanovich from Chulalongkorn University in Bangkok, Professor Jorge Tinio from the University of Philippines, and Dr. Elizabeth Checo from uh, George Washington University, and Mr. Peter Hughes from the Australian National University. So thank you all for joining us here today, um, along with our own scholars, Dr. Fiona uh, Barker and Dr. Kate McMillan from the School of History, Philosophy, Political Science, and International Relations. So we're very honoured to have you all here with us today. Today's discussion is the third such event in Victoria's Capital City Universities Initiative, which began with a symposium in August uh, 2016 on the rapidly changing power dynamics in the Asia-Pacific region, and was followed up by a symposium in November on the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. We began this initiative to leverage Victoria's unique position as a capital city university, perfectly placed to support policy making. Our direct access to decision makers by virtue of our location is an advantage we share with universities located in other national capitals around our region and the world. By networking capital city universities, the initiative aims to encourage subject area experts in prestigious universities in selected capital cities to exercise the special non-partisan responsibility they share to speak truth to power. In so doing, we aim to advance better government, and by fashioning the evidence-based consensus from the differing global perspectives of our capital city universities, we aim to contribute to the improved global governance that is desperately required if the world is to successfully address its most significant challenges. And I'm sure you'll agree there are, many, uh, there are a few more pressing issues currently facing our national leaders than how to respond to changing migration and refugee patterns and to a rise in populist politics. From Europe to the Americas to the Asia Pacific region, political debate is increasingly dominated by resurgent nationalism and an urge to close borders to some of the world's most vulnerable people. President Trump's, in my view, uh, recent foolhardy and unethical executive order imposing temporary bans on people arriving to the United States from selected Muslim countries is the most conspicuous of such moves and certainly risks increasing the likelihood of similar policies around the world. At the very least, this sort of decree is the antithesis of Victoria University's global civic values and its commitment to inclusivity, equity and diversity, and values such as this that we share with the global academic community. Anyway, enough of my views, and let me now hand over to the driving force behind the Capital City University Initiative, Victoria University's Dr. Matthew Omar, Assistant Vice-Chancellor International Engagement, who will emcee tonight's discussion on the connections between migration, refugee flows, and populist politics. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. 